world normally sees a leader as someone who uh, is in charge of or the boss over a lot of people. But I think that what we've really done in our company is we've taken that belief of a leader and flipped it on its head and we've really said that if you want to be a leader, you better be prepared to serve people. The higher you move up in our organization, the more responsibility you take on. Because when you take on responsibility for a department or a team, not only are you responsible for the team's success, but you're responsible for all those individual successes. A leader is a person who has influence over other people and does so for their betterment and not just their own. In 1911, E.F. Sewell was a hardware store owner and a lay Baptist preacher. His goal was to serve a need and lead through innovation. Sewell was the first to offer the new Ford Model T to his customers. First time buyers often arrived by horseback or horse and buggy. Model T's were delivered in a crate box and E.F. assembled those vehicles for his customers and gave driving lessons. The Sewell tradition continued as sons Woody, Carl, and Ed purchased the Ford dealership in Odessa in 1935. And at that time, my granddad had a grocery store in Crane, and, and they stopped by and they said, we have just bought the Ford dealership in Odessa and just wanted to tell you that we'll be moving there. And he said, you boys are getting too big for your britches. Odessa will never make it. If you want to put in a Ford dealership, you need to put one in in Penwell, because Odessa will never make it. So we, we know the rest of that story. Success was quick for the brothers as they sold out of their entire inventory in the first weekend. Dad said they had seven used vehicles and three new. And about 10 to 11 to 12 o'clock, all the bars started closing. And he said they had customers, so they didn't close. And he said the next thing they knew, Saturday they'd sold everything they had. Soon after, when 22 Ford vehicles arrived from Dallas, 11 of them were sold that day when they paraded them down Grant Street and parked them in front of their dealership on Texas Boulevard. Cars started at $695, and as prices increased, Woody stated that he couldn't look a man in the eye the first time he had to ask $1,000 for a vehicle. I can remember walking to the bank on Saturday for Mr. Woody, carrying the money deposited in the bank <laughs> over on Grant Street. During the oil boom, Sewell Ford was open 24 hours a day. And the dealership was open 24 hours a day. And Dad said he remember the first Christmas when they were going to close for Christmas. They, they, nobody had a key to the front door to lock the door. So they just got plywood and <laughs> nailed it across the three doors they had. With the onset of World War II, the Sewell's success, like most of America, came to a skidding halt. Automotive makers stopped manufacturing cars until 1946, so the dealership survived through service. The new car manufacturing had stopped, so all we had to sell were pre-owned vehicles and parts and service because all the new vehicle production had been shifted to manufacture airplanes and war crafts to send to Europe. And you think about that, I mean, if you take away 50% of your business, I mean, my grandfather knew that we had to do what we could to stay in business. And I think that that has just been inherent in who we are as a company, that that we want to do the best that we can with what we can. Woody's son, Ron, joined the dealership in 1967, just one year after the dealership moved to its current location on East 8th Street. In 1972, Ron became manager and changed the name to Sewell Ford Incorporated. Dad was very proud to be a Sewell. We're proud of our heritage. I can remember the thing that my dad told me, and that was to respect other people respect their feelings and their property. I guess you say my favorite memory was the people that worked there. Woody Sewell, he was the most gracious man you'd ever want to meet. And he would do anything in the world for anybody. Paul Crump joined the dealership in 1974 as a business partner and became a part of that leadership team. Well, the confidence I had in Woody Sewell, which is Ronnie's daddy and Ronnie, it 
led me to believe that this was the right choice. And Ronnie and Woody were absolutely most gracious. Well, about five years into this, I realized that, hey, we weren't only just selling cars and trucks, but we were helping people within the company grow and be better people because we promoted people for men and see them increase their lifestyle and their families improve their living standards. And that, that to me was one of the shiny points. You know, I always knew that I, it was a good company that I worked for and I appreciated my job. And, uh, uh, you know, I tried to do the best job I could because of that. For a century, the Sewell family of dealerships continues to strive to make their business a place where people love to work and love to do business. Oh, it's, it's been really great to be proud of the place that I work for. Um, most of the time, I don't think car salesmen uh, have that sense of pride of saying, hey, I, I work at a car dealership, you know, and the reputation that goes with that. But at Sewell, we have such a great reputation in the community. Having been in business for 100 years, um, I always get this um, reaction from people that, oh, you work at Sewell, oh, that's, I hear that's a great place. The the best thing about working here, as far as I'm concerned, are the people that I work with. I'm, I'm one of those that is behind the scenes, so I see very few customers. So I work with everyone that works here, and I work with 275 people. Everything is one goal, one idea. Uh, we bring it all together, and, and everybody just works so well together. It's the culture and the, the, the team environment that we have that, that makes it just a great place to work. You kind of get to learn here, you get to grow here, you get to have a life experiences here that you may not get to have anywhere else. There are people here that have had their entire lives changed by just working here. Whether you're here six months or you're here six, you know, 50 years, uh, you'll get something out of this place. It'll get something out of you because it demands a high level of work, a high appreciation of doing the best you can. And if you make a mistake, mistakes are okay. They're more interested in kind of where you're going than instead of where you've been. And uh, even, you know, they care about you where you're at, but they're not going to let you stay there. And that's what's great about this company is it's always pushing you forward. And so I've learned that, you know, you can make an honest mistake here and it's okay. As long as you're able to admit that mistake, take responsibility for it, and we can look at ways to fix that. Not everyone fits here. Not everyone can stay here. Not everyone uh, is willing to do what it takes to be a part of our team. And that's okay. Um, if there are people that come to work for us and they have a bigger dream, they're always willing to help them get there. They're always willing to help them do whatever it takes to get to that dream. It's not like they're handcuffed to stay here or they're bound to stay here. We stay because we want to. The character of the people in our organization determine the reputation and the character of our company. But I think I also realized probably over the last 10 years what I had to do to really develop myself first so that then I would be worth following. The store is full of leaders, I mean not just managers. We have a lot of people who may not have a management title, but um, they just lead. They're just people that we can go to. Everyone here is very open to learning and we, we just do that. It's an ongoing process. Setting the standard for leadership is found in the way a leader serves. That If you and I focus on our own problems, uh, we think that life seems pretty rough. But once we turn that lens and look out and look through the window at what other people go through, all of a sudden we realized how fortunate we were and how fortunate we are and how much more we really have to give. When we did the Big Serve this past December, uh, they were able to see in action people giving back to the community. I feel like that what our company has done and what people see in our company is not only what we do as far as selling cars and servicing cars and, and taking care of them when they're damaged and that kind of thing, but the giving back to the community. Pretty powerful stuff, you know. Uh, you come to work and you feel like you're part of something bigger than just generating money. We really kind of have a bigger purpose than just selling cars, parts, service, whatever. Uh, we serve the community in more ways than just selling product. Uh, it's great to, that that's not just something that we do for sort of good PR, but it's really about who we are and, and really our desire to give back. After we worked, we played a little football with them and everything. They really loved it. Uh, what I got out of it is, you know, it, just helping people. And, uh, you know, it really uh, softened my heart to it and, and helped me recognize that, you know, there's people that need help. When people start serving each other, then they start to serving other departments. And then this department works with this one. 
and then they automatically lead each other and they feed off you. And it's almost unexplainable. It just becomes a magic where everything comes natural. It's just the circle that everything starts to flow. It doesn't take long uh, just being in the dealership and working here to um, realize that, that it is what it is. I mean, we, um, we strive for that every day and it's just hard not to believe it when you see it in action. Colin said that he'd never wanted to build a big organization. He wanted to build big people. And that's modeled here at Sewell. I think that we're all sort of um, invested into by Colin and, and the leadership here and the managers that it's really allowed us, our dreams to come true and I think also theirs as well. To sell your first one 100 years ago this year and, and still be doing the same thing, I think is quite an accomplishment. And I don't think that you do it by abusing people. I don't think you do it by not caring. Do we do everything right? Absolutely not, but we try. Leadership serves as the gate for people to grow and extraordinary things to take place. When you figure out this place is something special is when you realize that it's always evolving, always changing. It's a big deal to be here. It's done over years of you sticking to the same philosophy and saying the same thing and preaching the same thing day in and day out and not only preaching it but living it in your daily life. Today, caring about people is the hallmark of Sewell. Leaders multiply the effect that they have on a community. And so if we increase the number of leaders who are very intentional about improving something, who are intentional about helping their teams, and intentional about improving this community, then we raise the standard for the entire town. What does the next 100 years hold? Where we go tomorrow will largely be determined by the foundation we are laying today. We will be a company that builds a generation of leaders. We will serve our customers so they become fans. We will be the gold standard for business. And we will remain a company founded on faith, strengthened by our character, and focused on multiplying value in the marketplace and around the globe.